Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Tag Time. So glad that you're here joining, getting God's word into your ears, into your mind, and into your heart. Because that's the way that we can live the life that God's created us for. And that's how we find out what he created us for. And that's how we get the strength to do what he's called us to do. So I'm very glad, very excited, and I appreciate you taking this time right now to hear God's word. So God gave me, gave me a word for us to share and for us to learn from today. And it's something that, you know, parts of it we may have heard before, the scripture we may have looked at before. Uh, but as, as always, we want to open our ears and open our eyes and allow God to speak to us now what he would have for us to know. So before we get into it, can't wait to see some of you guys again. I get to see a few of you all at church in our live service if you have a chance, get on by. We're still over at Burke's Elementary. You're welcome in our regular service. We encourage you to attend our regular service so you can get praise and worship. You can see a few of the other people that are around. Make sure if you have a chance, take that opportunity. Come on through. I might see about trying to hook up another lunch hangout, but I don't really see anybody anymore. So I don't know if we would have enough attendance for that. So if you want to do another lunch hangout, Put it in the comments or come to church and let me know. We can hook that up. There are a few restaurants that are open. The good old WB Whataburger is open where we can go in there and sit and hang out and have a good time for a while. So again, if you're interested in that, text me, leave it in the comments or show up at church and let me know. And the other thing before we get into the word today is don't forget uh, to sign up for our brief text messages that come out throughout the week little encouragement, little reminders, and stuff like that. All you have to do is text the word TAG, T-A-G-G, to 713-903-8533. All right, just send that T-A-G-G, -G, and you'll be on the list. I only send out a few texts per week. Don't worry, won't be a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to bug you or spam you or anything like that. Just would like an opportunity to be able to reach out, say what's up, see how you're doing, and all that good stuff. All right, now for the word... We're going to look in the book of Matthew. What testament is Matthew in? It's in the New Testament, the very first book of the New Testament. Like we talked about recently, we're going to look into another area there. And we want to talk about Matthew, or we're going to go to Matthew chapter 5. Now, there are lots of different things that we can look at in the Word of God. And it is a lifelong journey of what we're supposed to do. Just last time we were talking about how... We're not supposed to be uh, overly worried and concerned about what we're going to eat or how we're going to dress or this day or that day, but we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God. So we are supposed to, uh, our priority should be on finding out what God has for us to do, finding out who he is, finding out the way that he has for us to live and doing that. So we're supposed to seek first his kingdom, his way of doing things and righteousness and then the Bible tells us that as we're doing that, that he would add all the other things that we need. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't need to apply our faith to those things. It doesn't mean that we completely forget about and abandon those things. It just means that those things are not supposed to be our priority. Our priority is Jesus, and then we believe Jesus that we'll have shelter, we'll have uh, transportation, we'll have food, and we'll have safety and things like that. So we, uh, we still want to extend our faith concerning those things. We just don't want to be overly concerned with it. So if you're over there, turn there, swipe there, tap there, get to Matthew chapter 5. We're only going to look at one verse today. And then this is going to be connected to what we're going to talk about next week. It's the same, but it's different. Same difference. All right. So Matthew chapter 5. Just going to look at verse number 13. If you have a red letter edition, these letters should be red. And that means, red, R-E-D, that means that Jesus is speaking. This is something that Jesus is saying to the disciples and those that are around him. He says, ye, meaning you, are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth, or from that point forward, good for nothing. Oh, good for nothing. If the salt has lost its savor, is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. So he's telling us as believers, you, I, we are the salt of the earth. So I brought this today since we are 
uh, doing this video. This is salt. You see the salt? Got the old Morton salt. I don't know how long before the Morton salt girl will get canceled and probably won't have her picture on there anymore. But anyway, we got a thing of salt. This, this salt is representing you and I. And so the Bible, he's telling us that we're the salt of the earth. This is the salt of our food. But we're going to find out that there are lots and lots of uses for salt. But first, let's talk about what we know about salt. Salt is a, a flavor, something that we add to our food. Sometimes some of us like more salt and some of us like less. Now, of course, yes, if you have too much salt, it's not good for your body. It's not healthy overall. But you have to remember and know and understand that sodium or salt is a part of every cell of your body. So most of us know we're taught that we are a majority of water, right? Our bodies are made up of, I don't know, 70% water or something like that. But in all of those cells, we also have salt. Salt has a lot of function within our bodies. You know, for athletes, athletes getting salt and electrolytes replaced in their bodies after uh, a big effort is very, very important. So much so um, that when you're doing strenuous exercise or workouts or uh, for like pro athletes or just athletes that are playing uh, full physical games and stuff like that, you need to have salt replacement in your body to help you recover. It's actually encouraged that you don't just drink water alone because water doesn't have the salt to, to replace the salt that's supposed to be in your body. And so there are drinks and supplements and all these kind of things that have salt in them to help you recover. So salt is a super duper important part of our lives. It's an important part of our bodies and it's an important thing that we need to have to stay alive. All right, so we can start to get the picture of how important salt is. So we want to look at how important salt is, and then we want to look at how we are supposed to salt the earth or to salt the world. So, of course, we're not talking about we don't need to salt the trees. We're not supposed to have our effect on the grass or the birds in the air. We as people are supposed to add salt and help salt the world. And in this, we're talking about all those uh, people out there that may not believe in God. We're supposed to salt our communities, our schools, the places that we go. We're supposed to leave just little salt trails. We're supposed to season this over here and shake a little salt over there and put the salt on this and on that because that's what God has called us to do. Again, we're going to find out more about that. So he says that we're the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, where with it be salted? All right. That means if we don't do what we're supposed to do, that would be like you having that food, eating that thing that you like to eat that doesn't have any salt. Have you ever got some fries from like McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or wherever you get fries from and they have zero salt? They might taste OK, sort of like, but they need like at least a little bit, a dash of salt. There are some other foods that we like to put salt on. You might put a little bit of salt on your popcorn. Uh, I don't know, your broccoli, your corn, whatever. There are different foods that we like to have a little salt on because the salt helps bring out the flavor. We don't put salt on something so we can only taste salt. Have you ever accidentally put too much salt on something? Or maybe you played that trick on your friends or somebody played that trick on you where you unscrewed the top of the salt shaker. It's really, really fun but it ruins the food. You unscrew the top of the salt shaker, somebody goes to put the salt on their food and it just dumps all the salt out. It's hilarious, but it's also very frustrating because you have all that salt on your food and now, you know, it's a little bit messed up. Well, we're not supposed to overwhelm the world and we're not supposed to put salt on our food so that all we taste is salt. Otherwise, we could just turn up the salt thing and just pour it, put the salt in our mouth. That would be disgusting. That would be too much. So we're supposed to salt the world in a way that helps bring out the flavor, that helps things be better. Another thing that salt does, besides making things better or enhancing the flavors, helping things that are already in there come out, that's what salt does. Along with that, salt is a preservative. So back in the day, before they had refrigerators or refrigerators, before they could put their food in a cold, dry place, they actually would salt it. Sometimes if you go out on a hunt, if you're a hunter, if you like to hunt, 
and you go out in the woods and let's say you might be, you know, you might be on a, a long trip where you're, you're camping out and you go kill something and, uh, and you need the meat to last a little bit longer because you're not going to be able to get it to where you need it to go. Uh, you might salt it down. Now you salt it, you put salt all over it, you pack it and that salt will actually keep it fresh. The salt will keep it from spoiling. So back in the day before they had an op before they had an option, they would put salt on their meat. They would just rub a whole bunch of salt, like too much salt. They would rub that, you know, on the outside all over the meat. And then that salt would help the meat last extra days as opposed to, um, you know, meat won't last out for a day if you don't have salt or if you don't have it in a cool place. They would put that salt on. Then when they were ready to eat it, they would rinse the salt off they would rinse the salt off so they didn't have you know just super salty food and stuff like that they would rinse it off and then they would be able to go ahead and prepare it so salt helps bring out things that are already there salt also helps preserve or to help things last longer when this was being written in the bible rome the the country of, of rome was uh was everything they were everywhere they had taken over the area where Jesus was and where this was being written at the time. And there were times when the soldiers would be paid in salt because salt was so important. And you might say, well, I don't want to be paid in salt. Who wants to get paid in salt? I want money. Well, if you were going to use your money to go buy salt, uh, then, you know, that would be one thing. But also you would take that salt and you would take it home and it would be very valuable. You'd be able to use that salt to take care of your life, to take care of things that you needed to take care of. Now, spiritually, Speaking, we are supposed to be the salt of the world. That means we're supposed to be in places doing what God has for us to do as believers to help preserve those that are around us. Another example of, of salting without overdoing it is our nation. The United States was salted by the word of God. We live in a Christian nation. It doesn't mean that you have to be a Christian to live here. It doesn't mean that you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But our laws, our foundation, all that kind of stuff, it was salted by the word of God. And so we get a lot of our legal principles of not murdering and equality and uh, the way that we're supposed to treat each other and having freedom and choices and things like that. That comes from the, the word of God. That comes from the Bible. And so our country was salted. All right. We're salted in our nation through the influence of the word of God. So you and I are supposed to act as salt in the world around us, to those especially that are not believers. But when we come in and we do what God is telling us to do, then we can bring out some of the flavors and the goodness of what God has already put in. So God created the world and, and uh, he put in us to love freedom and things like that. Uh, and so when we get together and we protect freedom and we say, no, we need to be a free people. People need to be able to make up their own minds about things and things like that. Life is more enjoyed because of that freedom of choice. Or, uh, you know, when we're at school, we have an opportunity to salt the atmosphere. We can be a person who uh, continues to help things go in a negative direction in the classroom. Maybe we're laughing at the stuff that's not supposed to be laughed at. We're talking when we're not supposed to be talking or just being overall rebellious in the classroom or we can be salt by doing the right thing, doing what we're supposed to do. When people try to talk to us or, or get us to do things that shouldn't be done, we tell them, no, not right now, tell me later. Hold on, let me focus on this real quick. We just do what God has for us to do in the situation. And that will cause the situations that we're in to be better, but we also are preserving the world. You know, if we look back in scripture, there were times when um, you know, there was a time when God sent the flood and he, you know, wiped out humanity and he saved just a few because they were, they were the only ones that were worth saving. But there were other times when he wanted to wipe people out and he said, no, there's a little salt over here. There's a little salt over there. That salt preserved thousands of people, preserved all these other people that didn't even know or accept the sacrifice per se that was given for them. So God wants us to be around but in order for us to be salt, we have to live his way. We have to do what he has for us to do. We have to, to live the life that God created us for. And in doing that, we'll make life more flavorful and we'll help those that are around us be preserved 
so that they can have another day and another opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I hope that makes friends, hope that makes sense, my friends. Be salty in a good way, in the biblical way, not the world's way. I'll see you next time. All right, that's it. Tag, you're it. <laughs>